Good morning. Welcome to the parish of St. Mary of the Cross, MacKillop, Upper Blue Mountains, and in particular to the celebration of the Mass here in St. Canis' Church, Katoomba. We invite you now to mute any mobile devices so that we can give our undivided attention to the Lord. Concerning our collections, first collection for the support of our priests will be taken up at the offertory. Second collection for our parish needs will be taken up during the notices after the final prayer. A tap and go service is also available, especially for our many visitors. My sisters and brothers, as we gather to celebrate Mass for this 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time Year A, let us prepare ourselves to hear God's Word and receive Eucharist. Please stand for the opening hymn. Good morning. I'd ask you to keep in your prayers Andrew Krzyzewskow Beneshevsky, uh, who is uh, quite ill, and you might like to pray for his recovery. Uh, his family have asked uh, the prayers of the parish and uh, of this in this mass uh, for his recovery. So. Please keep that in mind as we offer the Mass this morning. I might just mention that in the Gospel, uh, it's a parable, I think that many people have difficulties with uh, the apparent unfairness of it, but I think part of the point of the uh, parable about the workers in the vineyard who come to work at different times and yet receive the same pay is that first of all God is fair to us all and all of us actually have uh, received uh, his mercy and compassion and therefore we need to accept the fact that God's mercy will uh, reach out even to people we might not like uh, and, and his, uh, every one of us are the recipients of his mercy and uh, it behoves us all to be joyful in that rather than jealous in any way of each other. So as we offer the Mass this morning, also we might ask, thank the Lord for his mercy and compassion that we have all participated in. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves now to celebrate these mysteries, let us first of all call to mind our sins and ask the Lord's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to the Lord. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked person abandon their way, the evil one their thoughts. 
Let them turn back to the Lord, who will take pity on them, to our God, who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways, not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. The Lord is great, highly to be praised. His greatness cannot be measured. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. The Lord is just in his ways and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ will be glorified in my body, whether by my life or by my death. Life to me, of course, is Christ, but then death would bring me something more. But then again, if living in this body means doing work which is having good results, I do not know what I should choose. I am caught in this dilemma. I want to be gone and be with Christ, which would be very much the better. But for me to stay alive in this body is a more urgent need for your sake. Avoid anything in your everyday lives that would be unworthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner going out at daybreak to hire workers for his vineyard. He made an agreement with the workers for one denarius a day and sent them to his vineyard. Going out at about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, Go to my vineyard too, and I will give you a fair wage. So they went. At about the sixth hour and again at about the ninth hour, he went out and did the same. Then at about the eleventh hour, he went out and found more standing round. And he said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, 
you go into my vineyard too. In the evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his bailiff, call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with the last arrivals and ending with the first. So those who were hired at about the 11th hour came forward and received one denarius each. When the first came, they expected to get more, but they too received one denarius each. They took it, but grumbled at the landowner. The ones who came last, they said, have done only one hour, and you have treated them the same as us, though we have done a heavy day's work in all the heat. He answered, he answered one of them and said, My friend, I am not being unjust to you. Did we not agree on one denarius? Take your earnings and go. I choose to pay the last comer as much as I pay you. Have I no right to do what I like with my own? Why be envious? Because I am generous." Thus the last will be first, and the first last. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> the biblical scholars seem to agree that Matthew's Gospel was probably written for a community that consisted very much of Jewish converts, people who had been Jewish and had come into the Christian faith. And there were probably Gentiles there as well, but there would be a large Jewish contingent. And so it is that Matthew's Gospel uh, very much tries to show how our Lord conformed to all the prophecies, how he fulfilled the prophecies and fulfilled the law, the Jewish law, right up to the time of his death and resurrection. He remained loyal and obedient to the Jewish law. Of course, he interpreted it in a different manner to many of his enemies. His enemies tended to see black and white rules and he instead saw a law that had been given in love. And if you look at a rules, or even of the church today, as mere black and white rules, then you will interpret them very differently from a person who sees them as commands of love. So, for example, uh, on a Sabbath day, our Lord saw it as quite all right to heal a person because he saw the commandment of the Sabbath of being a loving commandment, one which gave you time away from work and the anxieties of the day, time to turn your mind to God, time to sit with your friends and uh, to relax and to show uh, rest and compassion to each other. So our Lord was quite happy to heal a sick person on the Sabbath, whereas those who took the black and white rule saw, you shall do no work on the Sabbath, end of story. Do no work. Don't heal somebody, that's work. They, it's a Sabbath. God's there. God will be angry if you do anything else. So uh, both our Lord's opponents and himself saw themselves as fulfilling the law, the Jewish law. But since he looked at it as a gift of God's love, he interpreted it in a different way. So, as I say, uh, Matthew's Gospel shows our Lord conforming to the Jewish law, fulfilling all the prophecies until the time of his death and resurrection. Then our Lord has earned the right to bring in the new covenant and has been given the task by his father because his father raised him from the dead of bringing in the new covenant. And so the climax of Matthew's gospel is the very last chapter when Christ turns round and he said, I, uh, behold, I am sending you forth. I am sending you, nobody else. 
And he said, you shall baptize, not circumcise, but baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I will be with you all days to the end of time. So Matthew's gospel hints at parts of the gospel as what is to come, but on the whole, he is catering to his Jewish readers and showing them that Jesus has indeed fulfilled the prophecies, is the true Messiah, and therefore has the right to introduce the new covenant of baptism and so on. However, one of the problems for many Jewish converts, and in actual fact also for many of the converts from paganism, was that if the Jewish people were God's people, and if the Christ was a fulfillment of the Jewish law, why is it that all the Jewish people are not coming into the faith? And this would have been a big problem and a big worry for many of the Jewish converts for whom Matthew was writing this gospel. So Matthew takes one of the parables that our Lord has given, and this, of course, is only one of several occasions in the gospel. He takes one of the parables that our Lord spoke, and he puts it here. And what he basically is saying is that, in a way, the laborers who came at the very beginning are like the Jewish people as a people. The Jewish people through the ages had borne the heat and the burden of keeping the faith and putting up with the persecution and the sufferings that were inflicted on them. Yes, they'd failed on occasions, but their failures were nothing compared to the failures of most of the people through the world the immorality, the turning to false gods and all that sort of thing. So the Jewish people had borne the heat and burden of the ages in which they had remained faithful to God. And yet here and now, suddenly, uh, only a few of the Jewish people were being brought into the new covenant and all these Johnny-come-latelys, the Gentiles... Here they were coming in and getting all the privileges of the faith. What sort of God is this? And Matthew here is using this parable to bring across that message. So he's not trying to teach um, a, an economics class or a, a fair trade class or something like that. He is using this story to try and get a lesson across. And at the end, the owner says to the people who came first, look, I have not been unfair to you. I have indeed kept my contract. And of course, one of the things one has to remember is that the Jewish people themselves realised that even though they bore the heat and the burden they were still the recipients of God's mercy. So often they had failed and God had mercifully taken them back and preserved them. So it was not just that they had received justice from God, they had indeed received mercy as well. And God is saying, look, I have done that for you as I promised I would and I'm still standing by you. But... I am going to bring all these other people into the flock and I am going to make them part of my people too. And there is no injustice. These other people, yes, they are very much the recipients of God's mercy because the Gentiles had done nothing as a people, as people to deserve the mercy. The Romans, the Greeks, the people up the north, the people in the east, to everyone. None of them had done anything to deserve the mercy and the compassion of God. But God is a compassionate God. He doesn't just give out justice. He gives out mercy, compassion, and he, bring, he loves uh, the people of the earth. And of course, 
the Jewish people had known and had foreseen the time when all peoples would become one under God. They tended to think that everybody would become Jewish. But no, that was not going to be God's way. Rather, he was starting a new covenant and it would be a covenant that would include his people but it would include all people, those, of course, who wish to come to him. And so it is that uh, in this gospel, in a way, the, uh, the people of Matthew's community are being told, look, God has not been unjust. He has been just and fair. He has kept his promise and he will continue to keep his promise and he will continue to give mercy as well as justice but he is going to reach out to all people and ask them all to come to him. And of course we know that membership in the church is not something to be imposed. Unfortunately in the past, all too often, Christians have thought that the way to spread the faith was with the sword and we know of enforced conversions and so on. Many of those enforced conversions have resulted in great distortions of the faith in many ways. No, God invites us all. So many of his people could not see that Christ was the Messiah and they rejected the invitation. And many Gentiles, of course, have rejected it. But whoever accepts the invitation and becomes a member of God's community will receive the mercy and the membership of his family. But of course, God is not forgetting the people who have not come into the faith. He still loves them. He still asks us to reach out to them. And we know his mercy and compassion will reach them in his way. We won't always understand it. And we may very well feel ourselves that somehow or another we're not getting the reward we should get because we've kept the rules, we've done this right, we come to Mass of a Sunday, we're good people. Why is it that, uh, we're not, that things are not better for us? Why is it that the people around us seem to be doing quite well who don't come along to church? So you see, this parable was for a Jewish community but like all the gospel, it also has a lesson for us. That mistaken feeling that somehow or another we have earned the right to demand from God what we think is our right. Well, we have received all we have from God because of his mercy and his compassion and his love. And uh, we and he himself will exercise his providence as his wisdom dictates. There will be many occasions when we will find it very hard to understand why God allows things to happen the way they do. It's not a new problem. If you read the Psalms, you find out that the psalmists, the Jewish psalmists, on many occasions had an argument with God. People nowadays don't think you can argue with God. The Jewish psalmist did. God, why is it that the wicked are prospering and the good man is suffering? Why is it that I see the wicked man is, uh, complacent and uh, boasting and so on and nothing is done? What's wrong with you, God? Why don't you do something? And in the end, the psalmist ends up basically by saying, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing him, Look, God, I don't understand, but I trust you and I'm sure you'll work it all out in the end. So the psalmists often, uh, and the, the writers in the gospel often, had to just simply say to God they didn't understand why he was allowing things to happen like this, but they trusted him and they believed that one day he would bring justice and mercy to, into this world. And so it is with us. We are asked to put our trust in God <clears throat> and to remember that we have indeed received mercy from him and we are members of his church because of his mercy and compassion. 
And so we are asked not to uh, begrudge others the joys that God gives to them, but rather to simply focus on our own service of the Lord and on exercising love of God and love of neighbour. I notice our opening prayer mentions that, that that's what God asks of us. And so we might keep that in mind in this Mass and in our life in the future. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us open our hearts in prayer for God, for God is near to all who call on him. That church members forsake sin and turn to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That governments will promote fair wages for the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are seeking work will find employment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and grieving, especially those in our parish, as mentioned in the bulletin, may all be strengthened and reassured that divine love remains supreme. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the dead will be glorified with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord pray. We pray for our own intentions. O oh God, how generous is your love for us. Hear the prayer of your people and help us to work unceasingly in the vineyard for the coming of your kingdom, we make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
accepted by you, our Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through their heaven through these heavenly mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll be saying the Sunday preface number three and the Eucharistic prayer number three. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Mary MacKillop of the Cross, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for love and mercy. I eat your body and drink your blood. May it not bring it for the nation. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you like to be seated just for a little? Collection. Well, I think uh, while the collection's been taken up, I think most of the notices you'll find in the bulletin, it's just that I notice that there is at the back of the church these uh, leaflets concerning uh, the, uh, uh, the foundation uh, of uh, the Catholic foundation of this diocese. I think the background to that foundation is that the bishop when he arrived here, realised that uh, all the different appeals through the year, uh, A, we would receive the money and then it would be spent and then the next year we'd have to ask for some more and that would be spent and so on. And not only that, but things went up and down, up and down a bit. And so I think what he has tried to do is to form a foundation where the money will be uh, invested, there will be a body of money and as time goes by uh, it will build up so that there will be, we, we will be able to predict how much th there will be for each of the works of the diocese and at the same time it will be a steady income for the various charitable works that we uh, have, uh, that the diocese is involved in. So uh, I think uh, this pamphlet here is asking uh, people who would be able uh, to uh, either give a meaningful gift or possibly even consider putting the uh, foundation in your wills. Anyway, those pamphlets are there and you might like to read them and go and see what you think about them. And I think at the very end, if you wish to donate, uh, there are a number of alternatives uh, there at the leaflet. So I'll leave it to that. And you've got some notices. Yeah, too, just some you? quick ones, everybody. And there's sorry, I'll be brief. Um, just a reminder that there's a safeguarding training in the parish on the 28th of October. I've got to do. I've got to refresh mine as well. So if anyone volunteering here, please um, please register online. We've also set up. Uh, re a return and earn uh, fundraising capability for the parish, and that's to maintain, you know, these churches. Um, they need painting and things like this. So we've done a return and earn. You can donate using an app at the machine, or I'm going. To, we're going to bring some bins in, so is it people? Because I know it's not always convenient for people to get to a return and earn machine uh, and dealing with that sort of mess. So. Uh, we're going to provide some bins. So if people got those 10 cent containers and wish to do it, you know, if you wish to use your containers other ways, that's fine. But if you don't and you'd like to contribute to the parish, either the app or through it, we'll have bins that will include some leaflets at the back of the church, not this week, but uh, probably from next week onwards, which will explain how to use the app. Um, and there is a, uh, just quickly, we are looking at the, um, on the 14th of October, having the, the voice sausage sizzle uh, to take some uh, money from the voters as well to go more further to go through for the fundraising. And Barbara Davidson on that weekend is going to open up her garden uh, in Lura on, on the Saturday and Sunday, so the 14th and 15th. Anyway, that's enough from me. I'll, I'll let Father finish us off. Bye bye. Would you like to stand for the final blessing? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Yeah.